South Korea and the United States have begun their large-scale annual joint military exercises. The drills, which will take place through the end of August, are aimed at boosting military integration between the two allies. They are also conducted each and every year to ensure Seoul and Washington are fully prepared to defend against North Korea's ever-evolving threats. South Korea and the U.S. kicked off on Monday their large-scale joint war game exercise known as Urgy Freedom Guardian. Pyongyang has long denounced the exercise, calling it a rehearsal for a northern invasion. While Seoul and Washington stressed that the drills, which run until August 31st, are purely defensive in nature. The exercise is a computerized command post exercise which excludes field maneuvers. Military officials say that this year's exercise will include a three-step nuclear deterrence strategy, which consists of ways to counter an imminent nuclear launch or threat of a nuclear attack by the regime. South Korean and U.S. military officials plan to inspect the alliance's defense, interception and response capabilities to prepare for North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. They will also check the methods of deterrence using all possible means when there are signs of war. Sources say it's unclear if U.S. strategic assets such as B-1B bombers and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers will also be deployed in the exercise. In an unprecedented move, key U.S. military officials have visited Korea to watch the annual exercise. On Sunday, U.S. Pacific Command Chief Harry Harris and the U.S. Strategic Command Chief John Hyten arrived in Korea to attend the inauguration ceremony of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman. U.S. Missile Defense Agency Director Samuel Greaves will arrive in Korea later this week. The U.S. military officials will reportedly hold a joint news conference to send a strong warning message to North Korea. South Korean Joint Chiefs of Staff officials say that the drills will be smaller in size compared to last year and will involve a reduction in the number of U.S. forces taking part. Around 17,000 U.S. troops are currently taking part in the drills, while some 25,000 U.S. soldiers took part last year. According to South Korea's defense ministry, 50,000 South Korean troops are also taking part. It is not yet known if Washington will deploy strategic assets to the peninsula. The two allies have also upped their readiness and surveillance for possible North Korean provocations during the drills. Peace activists in Seoul protested the decision to go ahead with the drill, concerned it could trigger retaliation by North Korea. Pyongyang last week appeared to back down from a threat to launch a missile strike on the U.S. territory of Guam. China has also urged Washington to scrap the 10-day-long exercise. Posters openly threatening to attack the U.S. are plastered all over the city of Pyongyang. The state-controlled TV station repeatedly airs propaganda videos that encourage an atmosphere of war. North Korea has carried out various provocations during the joint Uchi Freedom Guardian exercise periods. In 2015, North Korea fired a shell at the Yongchun area in Gyeonggi-do province while the exercise was underway, prompting South Korean forces to strike back. Our top story this morning, the two Koreas on Monday peppered each other's territorial waters with artillery shells in the latest show of inter-Korean tensions. A North Korean military drill saw nearly 100 shells smash into the South Korean waters, which prompted a measured response from Seoul. For the latest, we are going to connect live to our correspondent Kim Hyun-bin, who's standing by at the Ministry of National Defense in Seoul. Hyun-bin. South Korea remains on high alert uh, following Monday's exchange of hundreds of artillery rounds across the Western Sea border. Uh, officials say that out of the 500 uh, rounds fired by the North during the live firing drills, uh, around 100 fell three and a half kilometers over the border in South Korean waters uh, near the Pengyongdo Island. South Korea responded by shooting 300 K-9 self-propelled heavy artillery shells into North Korean waters while dispatching several F-15 fighter jets to the Marine Time border, known in Korea as the Northern Limit Line. Civilians on South Korea's Pyongyang Island were forced to take shelter during the exchanges, which lasted about three hours. Earlier in the day, uh, the North's command of the Korean People's Army had faxed South Korean Navy's second fleet, announcing the live firing drills. Uh, the first time it's informed the South of the exercise ahead of time. The South Korean government interpreted the announcement itself as a threat with hostile intentions. The South Korean military is closely working with the United States and will be monitoring for, for uh, further provocations. 
Seoul's military has activated crisis management operations and deployed Navy convoys near the maritime border to cope with any possible contingency. Several inter Korean skirmishes have taken place around the area over the years, including the North shelling of Yeonpyeongdo Island in 2010, which killed four South Koreans. So, Hyunbin, how is the international community reacting to Monday's artillery exchange? <clears throat> Uh, the White House and the Pentagon condemned the North for initiating the shelling. Uh, the White House spokesperson Jay Carney on Monday called on the North uh, to refrain from actions uh, that threaten regional peace and security. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel also urged Pyongyang to stop its dangerous provocations. Even China, the North's closest ally, has expressed its concerns, calling all sides to remain calm and exercise restraint. Last year, just two days after the exercise started, North Korea tested a submarine-launched ballistic missile without prior warning, which was followed by its fifth nuclear test on September 9th, the North's Foundation Day of the Republic. The North Korean Workers' Party newspaper, the Nodong Shinmun, said no one can guarantee that the UFG drill will not escalate into a real war. The paper likened the UFG exercise to pouring gasoline onto fire, saying it will only exacerbate the political situation on the Korean peninsula and hinting at the possibility of retaliatory provocations. The North Korean propaganda website Uri Minjokiri also blasted the joint South Korea-U.S. exercise and threatened that North Korean armed forces are waiting for the order to start a final war with the United States. Central vitamins and minerals. 